Last week, I went to Michael's to get some fall inspiration for my home decor. While I was there, I saw several items that I knew that I could make for less. I wanted to start with these crate pumpkins. I think they're really cute. They had different phrases on them. Michael's was asking $12.99 a piece with 30% off, bringing theirs just under $10 a piece. But I knew I could do better using things from the Dollar Tree, from the craft store, or just things I had in my stash. For this first project, I'm going to be using this old CD crate. I had previously painted it white and we used it for our remote controls. Now I'm going to be painting it gray using this gray paint I got at a yard sale. I also have this brown paint from my stash as well as some black, which I didn't show, and then a dowel from my stash that I got at Michael's and the paintbrush and a paint lid for mixing paint. I also printed these words from Microsoft Word using fonts that were already there, so there's no copyright issues. I printed the words, hello pumpkin and happy harvest. And then I went ahead and gave my crate several coats. I think it was two coats actually of this gray paint. Then I cut the dowel from my stash into several pieces to use as stems. I buy my dowels from Michaels in a bulk pack that they have. There's also some inexpensive ones on Amazon, much cheaper than buying them individually. And I gave my little stem pieces a coat of brown paint. Now I was really trying to copy the Michaels pieces, but you could also use the Dollar Tree little tree pieces that they sell or something from your backyard. Then I went ahead and turned my printed out words into carbon paper by coloring on the back with my pencil. I do this a lot because I do not have a Cricut yet, although that is one of my goals for 2020. I want to get a Cricut. <laughs> and then I went ahead and folded the pieces just so I would make sure that they were straight. And I traced the words onto my crate. And once my words were all traced, I used a very fine paintbrush and I used some black paint mixed with brown paint and I just painted in the words, hello pumpkin. Now I did later figure out, I kind of got better at this as I went along because this is kind of a script font. And really if I had acted more like I was writing with the paintbrush, my letters would have turned out smoother. And I did figure that out by the time I was working on the second one. So if you do decide to use a script font ever and you need to fill it in, just pretend you're kind of like writing. Let your paintbrush flow a little more and it'll make your letters look neater. And once my crate said, hello, pumpkin, I went ahead and attached the stem using hot glue. The hot glue worked really well. You could also use wood glue, but I think for wood on wood, hot glue is just fine. And then I also attached my raffia using hot glue as well. And here's my first pumpkin. It's not quite finished and you'll see what I do to it in a little bit. I hope you enjoyed that project. My name is Nicole and you are watching my DIY channel called Nicole North Garden DIY. If you're liking what you're seeing, I would love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. It really would help me out. I also have two other channels, which I know sounds wild and crazy, but that's just how I roll. I have Nicole North Garden Home and Garden channel where I put up lots of content about lifestyle, so decorating and cleaning and haul videos. Then also Nicole North Garden All Things Thrift, where I post all of my thrifting and thrift with me's and thrift haul videos, where you'll see lots of the things that I eventually use in my crafting videos. So I would love to have you join me on any of those channels if you're enjoying my content. Now back to the DIYs. Next, I wanted to try to recreate some of the other crate pumpkins that I had seen at Michael's. I decided to use these long paint stir sticks that you can buy in packs of three at the hardware store or at like Home Depot or Lowe's. I actually get mine at Menards, which is kind of like a Lowe's near us. And they are 98 cents for three, or sometimes people say like a dollar and change. Basically it's about a dollar for three of these sticks. And I cut them using my little miter box and saw 
kit that I also got at Menards a while back. And then for my, I built a frame first and in the corners of the frame, you can see I put those little wooden cubes that you can get at the Dollar Tree. That was just so that I would get the angle right and it would give it a little extra support. And then I tried to evenly space the other stir sticks that I had cut for this larger pumpkin, I wound up using five across for the slats. I think I would probably prefer, if I were going back to do it again, I would probably do six slats across, but eh, you know, it turned out fine. I just think in the end, I would have liked them to be closer together. And on my next pumpkin, I did actually put the slats closer together. So I just used hot glue to attach the slats to the frame that I had built. And once I had my pumpkin built, I mixed two colors of blue that I had to make this really pretty turquoise color. That's the great thing too about duping things that you see in the store is that you can really personalize them to what you're envisioning for your decor. And I'm going to use this color and similar colors and orange um, in my fall decor this year. So I was able to make this really match what I'm planning for the coming season. Then I attached the stem and another raffia bow to the top. So I'm just following the same process as I did with the other crate pumpkin. For this one, I wanted it to say happy harvest, just like the one at Michael's did. And I used that same lowercase script font that I found on Microsoft Word and another thin brush. And by this point, I had gotten much better at uh, tracing my letters. So I really just kind of let the letters flow off the brush, almost like I was painting calligraphy. And that just made filling in the letters much better. It looked a lot better on this one, I thought. And I really wanted to have a set of three pumpkins because I like to do things in three. So using the scrap pieces from the other stir sticks, I was able to cut pieces to make a smaller pumpkin. So basically from that $3 worth of stir sticks, I was able to get two pumpkins. So for sure, I definitely saved money over the Michael's price. And you can see here, I did place them much closer together and I just liked the way that looked better. And on this one, I decided to make the slats go vertically instead of horizontally, the way that they went on the other two, just for a different effect. And I really liked the way that turned out. And I mentioned in one of my haul videos on my other channel for this fall season, I'm going with more of a muted orange. So I was really trying to figure out how to make my orange a little less orange. And the key was to add a little bit of brown, which I didn't know until I asked my daughter. She's very artistic. So I added brown and a little bit of uh, like a peachy cream and that kind of helped tone down the orange from being like bright orange. And then I attached another stem and a raffia bow. And so here is my little pumpkin. And then on this one, I just freehanded the word fall. Um, Cause again, I hadn't planned necessarily to make this one. I was just able to make it once I had all that wood left over. And so I just wrote the word fall and I put it offset so that it would be like the other ones because those were offset to the left. So this was offset to the right. And then of course I wanted to distress them because I like that look. So I used my 60 grit sandpaper and just took off the paint from some of the corners and also from some of the painted on words. And I just wanted it to look as though it were time worn. And then I took my antique glaze by Rust-Oleum. I use this product a lot and I dip a damp flour sack rag into the antique glaze and I just wipe the glaze on and then wipe it off. And you just kind of keep doing that process until the antiquing looks the way that you want it to. And then I did the same thing to the blue one and also to the gray one. And so here's what they looked like after being distressed. I love how they turned out. 
I think they are so great. I made two pumpkins for $3 plus the cost of the dowel and the paint, obviously, and the raffia that I had in my stash. And then this one, I don't even know. I probably paid a dollar or two for that crate years ago and have gotten years of use out of the crate and now it's getting new life. So here's what they all look like together. This is actually where they're gonna go. I'm gonna place them in front of my fireplace for the fall season, although I'm not decorating for the season yet. But I definitely saved over the Michael Price and I was able to, you know, personalize them to my decor, which I really liked. Another thing I saw in Michael's that I loved is this ceramic pumpkin with a pumpkin pie recipe on it. I thought this would be so cute in a kitchen, but they were asking $29.99 plus the 30% off coupon, but you're still coming out around 20 plus tax. And that is just far too much for a ceramic pumpkin, in my opinion. So I had this pumpkin from my stash. I picked it up at the Goodwill Outlet bins last year. If you're not familiar with the bins, it's a place that you pay by the pound when you're thrifting. So I paid, I'm sure, under a dollar because this is pretty lightweight. I also pulled out my polycrylic. This is an important part of the project. And then I had some paint from my stash, as well as this pumpkin pie recipe that I printed out on a laser printer. That is a key piece of information. You have to print it on a laser printer for this to work. So I mixed up an orange color that I liked. I did add brown again, which I don't think you see here, but I did wind up adding brown again just to mute down the color. And I gave it two or three coats of paint. And then once the paint was dry, I actually gave it a good coat of polycrylic, and that is key. You can get matte polycrylic, and I plan to at some point, but this is what I have in my stash, so I just used what I had. But that coat of polycrylic over the paint is key to this process working on this specific project. Then I trimmed around my recipe and took all the extra paper off now this is the step that i kind of goofed i should have like torn it into like a pumpkin shape or some other more pleasing to the eye shape because the the shape of the recipe the paper winds up being slightly visible in the end product but i didn't realize that at the time so anyway I could have torn it in a better shape. I didn't know that. If you decide to do this project, you should tear your paper into like a pumpkin shape or something that makes sense with the project that you're doing the words transfer onto. Then I put a coat of polycrylic on my pumpkin and a coat of polycrylic on my words. And then I just put it onto the pumpkin and I used this little old credit card to smooth out any bubbles that had formed. So, um, and it's really important not to put polycrylic on top of the paper because if, if you put polycrylic on top of the paper, this process also will not work. And I have more detailed um, instructions on how to do this laser transfer method. I do it fairly frequently because I don't have a Cricut and it works pretty well. I mean, ideally this project would look much better if I had a Cricut, but I don't and it's going to sit on top of my cabinet. So, you know, I was, I was, happy enough with how it turned out um, with just using this laser transfer since I don't have a Cricut, so. Okay, so I let this dry overnight. So you let it dry overnight. You really wanna give it plenty of time to dry. And then in the morning, I came in with my little glass of water and I put a good coat of water um, using my fingers and using my rag and I just really soaked that paper. So you just need the paper to get wet because what you wind up doing, what I was doing, is I'm taking the paper off of the pumpkin and then the words, the laser printed words get left behind. So I just rub with my fingers or rub with my rag, you'll see in a little bit, just to get all of the paper off as much as I possibly can. Now, this is what I was talking about. Mine kind of looks like a teddy bear. And if it were a pumpkin, it would have been much better. I just didn't have the foresight to realize that. I don't know why. I've done this a million times. I should have thought of that, but I didn't. And so it's okay because I wind up fixing it in the end anyway. But I'm just rubbing and rubbing until most of the paper comes off and the words are left behind. The footage of me actually completing the project got corrupted, but I will tell you what I did. So I took my 220 grit sandpaper and I sanded around the edges of the transfer. So the part that looked like a teddy bear, I kind of sanded off. And then I dry brushed some white paint onto the pumpkin because if you noticed the one from Michael's sort of had like white in its crevices. 
And so that also helped to mask the teddy bear shape. And then I put this raffia bow on top and that also kind of helps to mask it. So if I had torn my paper into a pumpkin shape or a leaf shape, then it would look cute and it would look like my recipe was kind of like, you know, printed on a leaf and then that was attached to the pumpkin or something. But instead I wound up with a teddy bear and had to disguise it. So if you decide to do this project, <laughs> keep that in mind. <laughs> And the last thing I wanted to try to dupe from my trip to Michael's was this little wagon. And I thought these would look so cute, filled with pumpkins or flowers for the fall season. The shape really reminded me of the little galvanized tubs here that you can get from the Dollar Tree. So that's what I decided to use as my base. And then I also, for the wheels, I decided to use these little containers. They are new to Dollar Tree. I got them from the crafting section. And I'm actually going to use the lid parts of them. And then I also pulled more dowels out of my stash and my craft paint. The Michaels ones came in several different colors. I decided to make mine white and I love the look of black and white enamel wear. So that's what I actually wanted to do for mine. So I made mine look like enamel wear. This metal tub is actually a little bigger than the one at Michaels, which is nice. It'll make for a nicer arrangement. The Michaels one was priced at $12.99 with that coupon. It was like at $9.09. Mine will come out to like $3 and change. Not a huge savings, but again, I'm getting to customize it to the enamel wear, which I really like. And mine will be a little bit bigger. I went ahead and painted it to look like the enamel wear first, and I just used my brush to look, put the little black edge on the top. And then I went ahead and painted all of my wheels black. You can see that here. And then I wanted to see where I wanted those wheels to wind up. And I just used my dowels to create two basically axles for the wheels. Now my wheels will not spin. If I had spent more time and felt like it, I could have made them spin, but honestly, that doesn't matter to me. I'm not gonna be pulling this thing. It's just going to be sitting on a shelf for decor. So I used hot glue. Caveat, I definitely needed E6000, but my E6000 got left behind at a birthday party, so I need to get more. So if you decide to do this project, you should definitely use super glue or E6000 because this does not provide a great hold with the hot glue and I'll probably go back and re-glue it. Look at that, looks like a barbell, doesn't it? <laughs> and also there's my puppy sleeping on the couch. Isn't he cute? And I was listening to Leanne, my friend from Simply Enjoying Life. She's great. If you don't know her channel, you should uh, go watch her. And that's what I was watching while I was making this. <laughs> And after I was done making my little axles, I attached them to the bottom with the hot glue. Again, E6000 would have been much more effective. Now, I probably could have stopped with the project right here, but I wanted to add some of the details that I had seen on the Michaels piece. This is what it looks like right now. And so I took this hook thing from the Dollar Tree because I always see people doing Dollar Tree crafts like taking these off like butter. I don't know. Maybe I'm weak. Didn't have the right tool. I don't know. But I really struggled to get that metal hook off. But I did eventually get it off using a pliers and a wire cutter. And I took my pliers and I kind of bent the end. And I wanted to make a slit in the side of my tub so that I could kind of hook this onto the edge so that it would actually function as a little handle. So I used my husband's drill and I just drilled a series of holes in a horizontal line and um, kind of attached them to make a slit. And then I also glued little the tops of little push pins. So I had snipped them off with a wire cutter and painted them silver and I wanted to use them as if they're the things holding the wheels on the wagon. So they're little, little silver caps on the wheels. And then I took my handle and I slipped it into that slit that I had made using my husband's drill. And then I kind of bent the handle closed so that it would stay on. And here's what my little wagon looks like. I think it's adorable. You know, there wasn't much to the one at Michael's anyway, so it's not a perfect dupe, but I'm pleased enough with it. And it was only a fraction of the cost. And here it is styled with some pumpkins and flowers. That won't be its final styling, but um, this is just what I had out for right now. I haven't gotten all my fall decor out yet. And that's all that I have for you today. I hope that you've enjoyed these Michael's dupes. And I hope that this inspires you to know that sometimes when you see things out at the stores and you don't like the price, maybe you can go home and make them for less. 
And until my next video, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.